Rickets is a disease of the bones which affects children and is caused by insufficient bone mineralization during growth. As a result, bones weaken and bow under the body weight's pressure. Before the 17th century, rickets was an almost unknown disease, but soon after the Industrial Revolution, with its huge problems of pollution in urban areas, the incidence of this disease skyrocketed. It took scientists almost two centuries to figure out that the two things were connected. Somehow, it was exposure to sunlight that was able to prevent the onset of rickets. Towards the beginning of the 20th century, scientists realized that if a child with rickets is exposed to the light of a UV lamp, the disease would regress. It was clear, however, that light did not act directly on bones, because when a child was exposed to the UV light on just one arm, the disease regressed in the same way in the other arm as well. Clearly, exposure to sunlight or the light of a UV lamp was able to induce in the skin the production of an anti rickett element that could subsequently be carried to the rest of the body. Unfortunately, the levels of air pollution following the Industrial Revolution were so high that the smoke generated from the factories would filter most of the light coming from the sun, especially in urban areas, causing the above-mentioned spike in rickets cases in children. Nevertheless, a winning strategy to cure rickets had already been discovered one century before by Professor Bretonneau and had nothing to do with sunlight. Rather, it was cod liver oil. When administered to rickett patients, it caused the disease to disappear incredibly fast. How was it possible that two so different strategies, exposure to sunlight or eating a fish oil, were both able to independently cure rickets? It wasn't until 1920 that scientists were able to figure it out by identifying the wonder molecule that's contained in cod liver oil. It was called vitamin D, or cholecalciferol. The very same molecule is also the anti rickett element that is built in our own skin when it is exposed to sunlight. But if a deficiency of vitamin D in children seriously impairs mineralization of the growing bones resulting in rickets, it is just as detrimental in adults, and even more in older adults, causing a painful reduction in bone mineralization called osteomalacia, as well as promoting osteoporosis, a weakening of bone mineral structures that make them extremely fragile and prone to fractures. For the same reason, many people suffer from seasonal back pains, joints and muscle pains, often confused with arthritis. Oftentimes, a vitamin D supplement would be enough to make these ailments go away. But why is vitamin D so important for the health of our bones? The main task of vitamin D is maintaining adequate concentrations of calcium and phosphorus in our bloodstream, which in turn ensures an adequate supply for the mineralization of our bones. Vitamin D accomplishes that in two different ways. First, by regulating gene expression in our intestine, it stimulates the production of those proteins that are necessary to absorb calcium. In other words, vitamin D promotes calcium absorption from food. Second, in our kidneys, vitamin D stimulates reabsorption of calcium and phosphorus, preventing them from being lost with our urine. These two mechanisms all result in the same effect. Our blood concentrations of calcium and phosphorus raise. Keeping their concentration stable is vital for our survival, as they are necessary so our heart can beat and nerve impulses can be transmitted. Of course, vitamin D is necessary only when blood levels of calcium and phosphorus are low. But we don't have to worry about that. Vitamin D by itself is inactive. When it is necessary, our body takes the necessary steps to activate it so it can become an active hormone called calcitriol and perform its important functions. Active vitamin D is so powerful that its activation is very strictly regulated and it needs two different consecutive steps, as if you needed two different keys to open a safe box. The first activation step takes place in our liver, the second in our kidneys. 
This means that getting plenty of vitamin D from food, sunlight exposure, or supplements does not automatically result in inducing its hormonal activity, if that is not required. It just means giving our body the opportunity of doing so should the need arise. But vitamin D is not just important for calcium absorption and the health of our bones. Vitamin D is an amazing molecule that never ends to surprise researchers. It is a hot topic in nutrition, and it is still actively researched, and we keep finding out more and more fascinating things about this powerful molecule. First of all, active vitamin D has a very strong anti-cancer activity by inhibiting cell proliferation and promoting cell differentiation. Numerous epidemiological studies have associated low vitamin D with increased incidence of cancers, especially breast, colon, prostate, and ovaries cancers. Vitamin D exerts an important regulatory activity on our immune system, and its deficiency has been associated to increased risk for autoimmune disease, including type 1 diabetes and multiple sclerosis. So far, we have identified about 50 genes whose expression is regulated by vitamin D. A few years ago, it has attracted a lot of interest the role of vitamin D in raising serotonin levels, which improve our mood, thus making it a sort of natural antidepressant. During menopause, vitamin D and calcium supplements are often beneficial in controlling some of the unpleasant symptoms, such as hot flashes and irritability. By inhibiting excessive secretion of renin from our kidneys, vitamin D also helps control blood pressure and avoid hypertension of renal origin. Marginal deficiencies of vitamin D have been associated with increased risk for acute cardiovascular events such as heart attacks and strokes. The list could go on and on, but I think I gave you an idea of how many different things this powerful molecule can accomplish food sources of vitamin D are rather limited. Short of eating fish liver oil, the best source is eating small fishes that you can eat whole, including their livers, such as sardines. Fatty fish, such as salmon or herrings, also have more vitamin D because they store some in their adipose tissue. The only known significant vegetable source of vitamin D are sun-dried mushrooms. Apart from these sources, the only relevant food sources of vitamin D are fortified foods. In the US, all milk and many brands of orange juice are fortified with vitamin D. Breakfast cereals are also often fortified with vitamin D. But vitamin D is not strictly essential as a nutrient, because like we said, we can build it ourselves in our skin, starting from cholesterol. To do that, however, we need our skin to be exposed to a source of UV light, typically sunlight. However, recommending to increase sunlight exposure to maximize vitamin D synthesis poses the problem of skin cancer prevention, as UV radiations that activate vitamin D productions are the same involved in skin aging and oxidation. Unfortunately, using a sunscreen protection will abolish vitamin D productions as well. However, it's important to remember that you do not need a whole lot of sun exposure to maximize vitamin D production. You only need 5 to 15 minutes of sunlight exposure 2 to 3 times a week, depending on how dark your skin is. And exposing your face, arms, and hands is enough to cover your vitamin D needs. Although, if you can expose your legs as well, that's even better. After that initial exposure, vitamin D will actually start being broken down to avoid excessive accumulation. So if you need to stay out in the sunlight for longer, you can go ahead and use your sunscreen to protect your skin without worrying for vitamin D. Unfortunately, for many people and in many areas of the planet, even a 10 minutes sunlight exposure a few times a week is not feasible the year round. Those living at high latitudes, where it's dark for many months a year, and often weeks go by without sun at all, are at extremely high risk for vitamin D deficiencies, as well as those individuals that, although living in sunnier areas, spend most of their time inside buildings, or in their car, or they go out wearing clothes that cover most of their skin. 
People living in highly air-polluted areas are at risk because particles in the air filter UV light. Finally, black people living at non-equatorial latitudes are at risk even if they expose themselves to sunlight because their skin needs much more UV light to make vitamin D. For epidemiologist Julian Pito, the reasons why early humans moving north evolved to turn their skin white is precisely because more vitamin D enhanced their survival. For all these people at risk, it is highly recommended, at least during the winter months, the use of vitamin D fortified foods or of a vitamin D supplement. The RDA for vitamin D is set at 50 micrograms until 70 years of age and then 20 micrograms after 70 years of age, as the skin ability to make vitamin D decreases with age. These levels, however, are based on the amount needed to maintain bone health and normal calcium metabolism, and do not take into account the many other benefits of vitamin D. Many nutritionists, following the recommendation of the prestigious Micronutrient Center of the Linus Pauling Institute, advise all healthy adults to get a higher daily amount of vitamin D, of 50 micrograms, through supplementations if necessary. To the best of our knowledge, this level poses no risk of toxicity and can only improve our health status. Finally, let me spend a few words on cod liver oil, which is the richest natural supplement of vitamins A and D. Although many think of it as a disgusting concoction, well-stored cod liver oil has just a slight taste of fish if eaten as such, but most supplements are available in the form of coated capsules that can be swallowed without having to taste it at all and without leaving any fishy aftertaste in your mouth. You should get it after the most abundant meal of the day so that you can have enough fat to efficiently absorb all the fat-soluble vitamins. And together with a multivitamin multimineral supplement that will also provide some calcium to keep our vitamin D busy as well as some vitamin E to prevent fat oxidation. It must be stored in the fridge or in a cool dark place to prevent rancidity and vitamin D degradation. Finally, be very careful not to exceed the recommended dose, because as you have learned, both vitamins A and D can easily accumulate and become toxic if we get too much.